But no matter what your background is, you still deserve to have a shelter. That is the whole point of this whole society bullshit. You still deserve to, to be able to put food on your table. Like, that's just, that's just what I believe in. I'm saying it. Compared to the dude who went to Appalachia? Well, I mean, first of all, yeah, kind of. Peter Santanello does a good job of humanizing a lot of the people that he's covering. Get out of there. Except, you know, he's also, you know, these are the people, these are white people. That he... All right, let's walk. What is this, a mind shot, though? So, Peter Santanello does a pretty decent job of humanizing the people that he's, like, uh, covering, even though he just has some kooky opinions that I disagree with. Here? Late match. That is some crazy work. Work. You're just under here in the dark. But I don't want to know what his fucking coverage of, like, homeless people would look like either, to be fair. We say what we mean, and we mean what we say. No BS. No. There's no bull crap here. When they pass away, it's like a fish being out of water. You would tell the young people just to leave? Last week, my husband worked 73 hours in the coal mines. If the flame burn a certain color, they know they were methane. Miner know it's time to get out of there. I was the first person in this county that was ever prescribed oxycot. This is all family? This is all family. That's the truth of that right there. It takes a rare breed for coal mines. This is Wes on the motorcycle. He met me at the hotel because he said, hey, there's no easy way into my place. You'll get lost. When you have the coal miner, Matt, it's yeah. official. Yeah. You're fifth generation, right, Wes? Yeah. It's life all its own, man. What would you do out here if there wasn't coal? This dude is much more normie coded. The other guy's full of dog whistles and just ready to cast individuals as bad actors and not systems. Yeah. Santinelli at least had the decency to treat people like people. He used human decency. The other guy shoved the camera in a homeless person's face and asked him to dance. Yeah. Um, he had, yeah, I know. I, we saw his border video. It wasn't great. Like, he, there is a, I'm not saying this guy's opinions are, are perfectly in line with mine. I'm just simply stating, I'm showing you a group of people that he's covering and his coverage and how it differs, okay? How his coverage differs from the way that uh, the other guy was covering human beings, ultimately. Peter doesn't show you people who don't want to be taped. He's okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, that dude has a 3 percent shirt on. I don't think he's normie coded, but very conservative militia coded. Yeah, he has a Confederate flag patch on his biker's vest on the corner back there. I'm, yeah, but he's... Bro, he's a fucking poor redneck from uh, West Virginia. What the fuck are you talking about? We're not talking about him being normie coded. We're talking about Peter. Okay? That's it. Kaya. Why are your ears so fucking unclean? What is happening? Buddy, if they wasn't, uh, what coal mining's left around here, this place would just dry up. Dry I mean, up. It already has, I mean, pretty much. But these look like all pretty well taken yeah. care of homes. Well, this is all retired coal mine. 95% of the men you meet here, they all went to coal mines when they was 18 year old. Some of them younger. My dad started when he was 17. So they go right out of high school into the mines? Yeah. Your dad lives up here? Yeah, dad lives right up top of the hill here. Dad's health started declining a little bit. I come up and, to be around him. And my grandpa got killed in 57. How'd he die? Coal mines. When I started in the mines, I started in, in 89. Just in this community, just, just Kaywood, not Harlan County, but just Kaywood, there were probably over 100 coal mines just in this little area. Here. Oh, wow. Now there's none. Coal mining started here in 1903, I think. It was actually before them because they hand dug. Back in the day, everybody had their own little mines. They just dig out the bank. And They'd have like little family mines here. You know, everywhere they dig the coal out. They actually used it for heat, cooking, you know, whatever. And then when coal finally picked up, you know, they did come in here and start mining it. Then some of the guys got rich. Some of the people got ripped off. I got a 12 year old. He's probably still asleep. But you don't want him in the mines, or do you, when he no, grows up? No, 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 no. His education comes before everything. His academics is unreal for him to just be going in sixth grade. He's got awards hanging in there. I mean, 
some medals from uh, the Governor Scholar Program. And, uh, so you're super proud. <clears throat> oh my God. So it's been five generations and you're okay with it stopping? Yeah, my oldest son, he actually, he actually went into mining and he, okay. he worked. When I decided to come out, uh, which I know that I had black lung, and I was already seeing a black lung doctor before Christ. I come out, but the mines was declining, and I'd already talked to my son uh, and told him, you know, I said you need to be looking towards something else. Now today he uh, he makes almost two hundred thousand dollars a year. Doing what? He is uh, electrical. Uh, he oh. works for one of the lineman companies. Black lung. Explain that to us. From the sounds of it, you work long enough down in the mine. Your lungs yeah. turn the color of yeah. coal, right? Well, what it does, it scars your lungs. Also, a lot of the rock, when it gets in there, the doctors, when they describe it to you, they say it's like little small shreds. I like that of glass, this guy is. And it just cuts. Uh, he, he values his oh, son's scars. education. Dad had six, let's see, five brothers. He's the only one living. And the sister's husband also, they worked in the mines. And uh, we've watched every one of them die. And the doctors describe it as. When they pass away, it's like a, like a fish being out of water. I mean, you go in there and you know it, eventually that's, that's what's going to happen. But when you got a job that's paying, when I started, I mean, sounds crazy, I made eight bucks an hour. But back in, in the, uh, back in 89, hell, that was good money. Minimum wage was probably, what, $4 an hour or something, 375 okay. something like that. So really, I mean, you started out making good money. and. Uh, it, as it went along, I mean, when I come out, I was making $32 an hour as a foreman. Now, my cousin, I don't know if he's home or not. We may be able to get him to come out and talk to you. He's still working. He's got about 34 years in, I think, now. 34 years in the mines. Yeah, he's real close to it. If he ain't got that, he's real close to it. So in this, yeah. is this a hauler or no? This is a, this is what, what you would call a ridge. Uh, okay, in the hauler. ridge you got a bunch of family, huh? Yeah, this is all family. Everybody except this house here. Everybody and that's up. that's very uh, Appalachian, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You grow up, you stay, yeah. the family, generations yes, sir. churn for years. And in yeah. these parts, it's coal that's just kept everything going. Yeah, and the families are so tight-knit. When Dad's dad got killed in 57, three years later, right. his uh, brother gets killed. They've got all these kids. You know, back in it was normal for a family to have eight, ten kids or whatever. So, you know, they all had to just chip in and raise gardens and kill hogs and just take care of each other, you know what I'm saying? We say what we mean and we mean what we say. If we like you, we like you, and if we don't, we don't. And you'll always know where to stand with us because if we if we don't like you, then we'll just tell you, you know, we won't be mean to you. We won't, we won't be mean to you at all. You know, we, we will, you know, say, come on up. And I don't know who you are, but I, you know, you want something to drink? You know what I mean? But if we like you, we like you. And if we don't, we just say uh, our howdies and keep on going. No yeah. BS. No, there's no, no, there's no bull crap in here. E N Y, Jenny. Jenny, Jenny Johnny, okay. as you would say, my name is Jenny Smith. Uh, I've been with the coal miners since 1989. Yeah, he started at the same time. Did y'all start at the same time? Yeah. And his dad was a coal miner and his grandfather was a coal miner. Along and with his uncle, which is great his dad. Grandpa. Was great grandpa too? Bert was too, yeah. Uh, great grandpa was a coal miner. So you had like four four generations Five. right there. Five? Louis. See, he knows more about it than I do. But as far as um, uncles, they, you know, they all coal mined. But as far as wanting better for our kids, yes, because. That woman, along with everyone else, that fucking town gossips for 15.6 hours a day. Um, does she have a lip in? That'd be pretty funny. No. No, Kyle. Why are your dogs out putting some shoes on, Jenny? How do we save these people from thinking they have to be coal miners? This guy's unique because he saw his son succeed elsewhere. Not everyone's going to be so lucky to get that perspective. Um, Funny. Business. You fucking build a goddamn... Get the government to fucking build roads. You get the government to build... A, uh, a a factory and then that factory is like heavily subsidized with uh, serious conditions that like unions ha uh, they have to be operated by union workers and then that factory gives a hundred thousand dollar a year jobs to people to build fucking solar panels or whatever the fuck that's it 
A lot of people say retraining programs don't work. Yeah, motherfucker, because it's a if it's a retraining program and not like an actual job, then yeah, on its face, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be worthwhile. But if it's an actual fucking job, people will train themselves for it. You want to know why? Because they want to make money. Nobody wants to not work. Of course they want to work. I said, these people's grandparents were fucking literally fighting cops, okay? No, nah, people don't want to work anymore. Yeah, totally. Nobody wants to work anymore. Very new and very different. Very new and very different. Nobody wants to work anymore. A new take that we've never heard throughout time. Bro, you go back to the fucking 17th century, okay? In an early newspaper, you're going to hear business owners saying that, okay? They will train themselves for it and ride and die for it. Exactly. These people are not, like, born with a, with a coal mining bone in their fucking head, okay? There's no, like, hereditary uh, uh, genealogy at play here that forces them to work at a coal mine is because that has historically been the main industry that they associate with putting a fucking roof over their heads. That's it. I'm an apprentice millwright on layoff for three months. I very much want to work. Yeah. This call is just something that's just not promised. So that's got to be hard for you because it keeps the lights on. It pays the bills. It's good. A brief issue of capitalists crying about that nobody wants to work anymore. Yeah, I saw this on Twitter. Someone just <laughs> yoinked it. I love when people do this. <laughs> they just yoinked some dude who like meticulously put together news articles on a Twitter thread and just posted it on Reddit. But yeah, 1894. Next winter, it's becoming apparent that nobody wants to work these hard times. None want to work for wages. The reason for food scarcity in 1916 is that nobody wants to work as hard as they used to. Capital owners have been saying that, okay? They've been saying that. You know what's funny? It's always the same problem. Post-industrial revolution or just even, uh, the, you know, no matter what time frame you go to, if there is something resembling an owner, a boss of a business... And then people that are working for, uh, you know, people that are working for not uh, toiling their own lands like serfs or whatever, but uh, people that are working for that business owner, you're always going to have this attitude from the bosses. <sighs> Dumb as fuck. Good money. It's one of the few industry. It's the main industry out here. Right. But then you don't want the youth to continue on Absolutely. No. so what do you do you want them to move out of town or well no. go go to school okay go Good to school education. do an education just like my daughter we wanted her to go to college and better herself we didn't want her which you know she's a girl and a girl probably wouldn't work in the coal mines okay. but we wanted her to go to school um, why not dorothy brother, we don't want him in the coal mines we want him to go to college and make something of themselves so that that just uh, that just recently changed. Then this whole get the family out of coal. No, actually, my dad begged me to go to college and not go to coal mines. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because of the way his health declined. I mean, my dad's been down now since what? Fifteen years. At least. At least. Last week, uh, my husband worked seventy-three hours in the coal mines. That's normal. Why? He's literally one of the better travel guys who do these. He's a cornball liberal, but at least he listens and doesn't make a spectacle. You probably watch Bald and Banker and a bunch of actual criminals, who, but hate on Peter because you're ignorant. Yeah, I think Peter also certainly has had a change of attitude since COVID on certain issues. Let's be fucking real now. But he definitely is like, he ain't a lib. I think he used to be, but now he's definitely not uh, as much of a liberal as he used to be. Um, I think, because I've seen, dude, this guy is so fucking kind to his uh, his his subjects, okay? And I mean subject in, like, the interviewer sense, okay? He is very good at treating the people that he's covering with kindness. And you would not expect a person who is, like, a reactionary to do that in a lot of these... In a lot of these videos, like... Uh, 
like going to the to the uh, Bangladesh uh, neighborhood, you know what I mean, in Michigan, and covering the food and talking to the people there. Like he's very, he doesn't have like an angle to be like, yeah, what's up? Are you guys like regressive? You know what I mean? Are you guys regressive? Are you are you like Muslim reactionaries? How? What are your thoughts on women? Like, oh, should you cover all women? Like, like a like an edgy lord libertarian fucking pervert would do a would do that kind of thing when he's covering people like that. But he doesn't do that. Even his Amish videos, right? Yeah. Normal? No, that's, yeah. yes, that's yeah, normal for him. Especially if you... So you're not seeing him? No, he leaves it for us. Yeah, I mean, we already covered this so many times, the letter Q, but you're right. I live in Appalachia. I wish people would remember that these are descendants of the people who literally died to give workers rights. This whole area is right for labor action, but we forgot by everyone, including libs, who think we all deserve to die for living in a red area. For 30, he has to be at work by 6, and he comes in at 6 or 7 o'clock of it. I mean, dude, every this day. is a dude who's wearing a 3 percenter t-shirt, and he's got a fucking uh, biker's vest with a Confederate flag on it, okay? A 3 percenter t-shirt and a biker's vest with a Confederate flag on it, living in fucking West Virginia. Remember, we're talking West Virginia, okay? The, the, the irony here is that oh this is kentucky oh they moved on to kentucky not west virginia okay regardless 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 okay appalachia you can fucking uh hit it with the same fucking <laughs> hit it with a, a broad paintbrush it's still appalachia these are still coal miner towns ultimately though ultimately ultimately what did he say he said he should have listened to his daddy and not worked in the fucking coal mines, and he's not making that mistake for his next of kin. And he cares so much about his child's education and rewards it, okay? Doesn't matter if he's a fucking reactionary. He's breaking that cycle, whether he even recognizes it or not. I don't give a fuck if he loves Donald Trump or if he would fucking ride or die for Donald Trump. Ultimately, at the end of the day, he's still a human being who deserves dignity. And given the circumstances, these people are definitely more dignified in their existence, especially because of the mythology of the white coal miner and the coal miner in general, but also, uh, also due to uh, the the like, also due to the reality that like there was at least some level of uh, of of wages that were afforded to him at a certain point in time. And he has a house and shit like that. But in, in a way, there is no difference between that guy and the fucking homeless guy that you're shoving a camera in. The only difference is he has a home, okay? He's been fucked over by the systems in the exact same way that the homeless guy has been fucked over. The only difference is the homeless guy doesn't live in Appalachia, wasn't a coal miner, probably a fucking uh, you know, veteran in many respects. Uh, in many of these circumstances, that's what happens. Okay, But no matter what your background is, you still deserve to live with dignity. You still deserve to have a shelter. Like, that is the whole point of this whole society bullshit. You still deserve to, to be sheltered from the elements. You still deserve to, to be able to put food on your table. You still deserve to live a life of dignity. I don't give a fuck uh if you're wearing a three percenter patch or a confederate fucking flag ultimately you still deserve health care okay like that's just that's just what i believe in no matter what i uh but uh, of course there is a difference between this guy and all of the black people for example that live in uh urban environments that have been purposely redlined his shelter and his privacy and the social safety nets that he has, albeit they're very slim to none, close to none, is still afforded to him in a way that is not afforded to the average black person under similar circumstances. So that's another thing that you also have to remind yourself of, because ultimately America is still a white supremacist country. However, and black people in the chat will absolutely agree with this tag at least, a country that fucks over their white working class folks like this well, they're going to fuck over black people even harder, okay? Uh, but you were glad a Nazi offed himself and called his lips for not agreeing? Yeah, because I understand the difference between some fucking Naperville dipshit who is like a Nazi who then ends up killing themselves 
ver after like being an ideological Nazi and out and about Nazi versus some fucking dumbass who's like, yeah, my brain is broken from watching Fox News every goddamn day. And even then, I still believe that that Nazi has the uh, should get health care. Okay? This is a part of the population that shit for on from both the left and the right. Conservatives hate these people too because they're poor and received as gross mountain people with the whole inbred hillbilly trope. They get no love from either side and rightfully feel forgotten. Republicans love to fantasize about the classic red-blooded American coal miner, but have abandoned them in real terms on every level. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Day to provide for his family and his grandbabies. They had to call me out of school because my son was taking panic attacks because he heard me talking to my girlfriend about going back to a coal mine. Yeah. My husband uh, works for a place called Inmet Mining. Uh, they're out of Knoxville, Tennessee and they had had to file bankruptcy. And we're in limbo right now trying to see if somebody else is gonna come in and take over the place of employment that he works or they're gonna just shut the doors. But they are doing it the right way. They did give us the Warrant Act as far as like the layoff letters that we've gotten in the mail. Um, they've, they've done everything. The only thing that they're, that, they're, that they're not doing is letting the miners know for sure what's gonna go on. And they won't. They and like so I, is that, it, it just, that happens a lot, like, when the, the mines are busy? No, when the mines are, when, I, I really don't know how to answer that, Wes. How would you answer that? Well, I mean, like, like when Jay Justice come in here, you know, and raised all the wages. I mean, when people went from working for 13 50 an hour, I mean, I worked for 13 50 an hour for years, and that was good money around here. Jay comes in, raises the wages, $18 an hour, you know, uh, to 20 some dollars an hour. Then when he decides he's just ready to shut down, you just go into work one day and, you know, like where I was foreman, they called me in and they said, tell everybody go home. You that know, happened, we're, that we're has happened down. a lot, yes. This letter shall serve as a layoff notice 14 days from the beginning of June 2nd. So very stressful for you right now? Um, yeah, not knowing, you know what I mean? No. Uh, thank, thank the good Lord above, I was able to pay my house off like a few year, like a few months ago. Good so I mean, that, that takes a, a, a load off. And the only thing that we owe for. According to this article, at least, the Mountain Eagle, Inmet is still operating with no layoffs. Inmet Mining LLC, which operates several underground mines in Ledger and Harlan counties, has not laid off workers yet, despite a warn notice sent to employees, according to a company official. Jeff Strobel, who's the chief restructuring officer for Inmet, said Inmet is negotiating with another company now, and it hopes it will not have to cut jobs. To date, Inmet has not laid any employees off and continues to operate as it proceeds through the Chapter 11 process. In the Chapter 11 process, Black Mountain Marketing and Sales has submitted to a stocking horse bid to acquire the Inmet assets and provides for BMMS to offer employment to Inmet employees. They're definitely going to do layoffs once it's sold, by the way. Um... It may continue to work to avoid layoffs and is hopeful that in the uh, near future it may be able to extend a date uh, previously issued warn notices. Inmet employs about 360 people. Um, remember, one other thing that we've talked about before, one other thing that we uh, talked about before was also the overall number of coal miners is pretty fucking small. Like these, these people, uh, oh, there is... Oh, I feel like there's probably more coal miners that were already laid off than there are currently working coal miners. Like the number of Arby's employees, for example, around the nation is significantly larger than the number of coal miners in the United States of America. 38,400. Let me see. Yeah, 38,400. Uh, in the United States of America. How many Arby's employees are there in the U.S.? Yeah, see? 80,000 employees. Arby's has 80,000 employees. Just remember that when we're talking about this issue. So, um, in many respects, it's a forgotten, uh, it's a forgotten business, Okay. We don't have towns of Arby's-based economies, though. Why do they have so many employees? Who the fuck goes to Arby's? The reason why I used Arby's as an example is because it's, like, a less popular franchise. It's, like, one that's dunked on, and even then it still employs twice the amount of fucking workers. You know what I mean? Uh, 
Inmet Mining LLC, the company that operates here, is owned by a holding company, owned by an individual, and I'm not at liberty to say anything more about that, Strobel said. Nice. All right, let's continue with this. Is the pleasures of Meanwhile, we should also continue forgetting to run the top of the hour ad break and then run it now. 23 fucking minutes in. Okay? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. It's my birthday. You can't get mad at me. You can't give me a low score for my segue here. Here's the minute ad break now. ...of life, such as a side-by-side, a boat, a pontoon, you know what I mean? Wait, you forgot the race car. Oh, no, don't be throwing off on the race car. Yeah, that, that's, that race car provides our living. That's what he drives back and forth to work every day. Oh, okay. That's what he drives back and forth to the coal gotcha. mines every day. You're saying this is in the last four or five years? No, well, I spent the last 10 years. Things have changed as far as crime and drugs and stuff like that here in our area. Probably back in 1993, 94, 95. Even in the early 2000s, you could leave your windows open and even your screen doors open. But as time has went on and drugs has come into the area, you are for sure to lock your windows and close your doors and lock your personal stuff up. Because if you don't, you don't never know when somebody is just going to drive by and maybe take them. I mean... In this neighborhood, that looks quite calm. Yeah. Wes, you the same? Well, I'm a little different. I leave my door open because I just like the fresh air. But at the same time, if you come in my door, you know... The corner is going to be the next stop you make, you know. You got a good shotgun in there? I, I, I'm well protected. I'm not going to let nobody take nothing that I've worked for. Uh, I'm not going to let nobody come in my house and bother my family. They know, too. They know who they can steal from and who they can't. I mean, they like prey on like older people or, you know what I mean? It's just like... Yeah. That's harsh. And, so and they know they, like they, they know like where y'all go out of town a lot. I mean, no doubt they know people. I mean, hell, it's but again, Caleb. but people we are know. we are protected also, um, and we won't discuss how means are that we are de 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 protected. But you come on our property, we will know it one way or the other. And once once we find out, we will prosecute to the fullest if we need to. And like if they go out of town, I drive by here several times a yes. day. If I go out of town, they drive by. Dad's always home. He's looking out for everybody. I mean. That's my husband. He might be able to. So he has one of his random days off. Yes. He got he got today off instead of the 4th of July. They're going to work him on the 4th of July? Yeah, they're going to work him on the 4th of July. That's not very patriotic. Oh, Lord. No. Something tells me you're not Damn, he's got the Polaris, baby. You can off-road this too hard because it's no, uh, in perfect it's shape. Custom-made doors? They actually make them. I didn't want to pay $700 for a set of doors, and she was on Marketplace and found them for 350 bucks. <laughs> Look at that. So it's the American edition, huh? Yeah. Damn, this one looks mean, brother. Hell yeah. You got a, what's it, that there light the flag up on the light bar so it don't blind everybody. You can actually run it with that right there on and not get in trouble. There you go. Oh, geez. You guys are ready for Miami Beach with the, uh, the kid <laughs> under there, huh? <laughs> don't be a pud muffin. Pud muffin? Yeah. So yeah. you're saying don't wear. Just regular working class folk, by the way. Wait, what the fuck do you think these guys are? I mean, he has a Polaris and a fucking Jeep, but, like, what, what do you mean? What, you think this guy's caked? You think these guys, like, actually live in the high life? This is literally the, the exact same thing that racist people do when they see, like, a black person that's living in, like, uh, it, you know, shitty conditions, but they have, like, nice clothes or, like, a nice car or something, and they're like, why did he spend his money on this? Like, what do you mean, bro? He's got nothing. It's one of the cheapest areas in the country, and their house has been paid off for two whole generations. Exactly. There are some parallels between miners and military in that respect. Uh, I mean, this is definitely nicer than what I have. Yeah, it's nicer than what you have because you don't live in a fucking house that costs like ten thousand uh, dollars when your grandfather fucking built it with his hands. Okay, that's part of the reason because you don't live in West Virginia where uh, the telephone service cuts off. You still use a telephone. And the telephone service cuts off every now and then for weeks on end. Your seatbelt. Yeah, don't worry. 
you'll be good. Well, I have Kentucky's best driver. Why, why would I need it out here? <laughs> have fun. Thank you. <laughs> to be fair, you said, uh, hold on. You said, yeah, dude's been in the mines for 34 years, bro. It's like, that's the other part of it. It's like, what do you want this motherfucker to do? He should be living in a goddamn mansion. But uh, what's also funny, what's also funny is, of course, someone in the chat said, it's like when uh, dumb motherfuckers say, like, them refugees, they got the newest iPhone. And it's like, I feel like, I do feel like that guy would say that. <laughs> Like that guy that we just saw, I'd be looking at the TV going, look at them Haitian refugees. He's got a fucking, he's got a football jersey on. Well, not football, a fucking soccer jersey on. You should also be a little bit smarter than that guy. That's where they just shear off the top of the mountain. Yeah. And get the coat. Do you work on top or you work in the... I work, I work. Under the mountain. Under the mountain, back going back in. Some of them's got like five entries. See, see how this rock right here yep. is? And there's a coal seam right there. They'll go under it, and we use boats and everything like that, what we call roof boats, and to help support the top as we drive. There'd be like five different entries across through there. So when you say coal seam, you see like a layer of coal in the yeah. in the earth, yeah. and that's what so you guys tap right into. Yeah. I'm going into my 35th year this year. How many do you want to do? I don't want to quit work. Dude, my man, my man worked in the coal mines for 35 years. Not like Steven Seagal style, like not where Mama at. Like, straight up actually fucking worked in the coal mines for 35 fucking years, bro. I can't believe you. You know, I can't believe Chad was, like, trying to take his treats away, dude. This guy, you know, this guy's like, yeah, you could take my gun away from my cold, dead hands. You could pry it from my cold, dead hands. And, it, like, also low-key kind of makes sense, okay, for him to say that. Now that I heard what the bi-coastal elitist got cooking up for him, okay, in this fucking chat, I get why he's saying things like that. I can't see myself self living off of trying to draw a tick. I mean, that's, you know, that's just way of being raised, tall. And you must be good at what you do. Well. Also, you got to realize, you know these motherfuckers are workers, okay? You want to know how? They live in West Virginia. Look at his body. Okay? This dude has no, like, if he wasn't, or Kentucky, not West Virginia. Sorry, I keep saying West Virginia. Kentucky, he's in peak physical shape. Uh, so, so. I'm all right. Are you down there on your hands and knees crawling through? The cold seam I'm in right now, it's not that low. I can kind of duck, walk, and uh, get around that way. But now when I first started, you're talking to me, and we're from 19 to 24, 26 inches. 19? Yeah. That's the lowest. So that's, you're, you're that's the lowest I've been in uh, 19 inches <laughs> wow. in the coal seam. So when you're in the coal seam, it's 19 inches, which is basically this. When we when how we, how far in are you going? I just depends on how far we got the mine stroke. But you're talking like 50 feet, or you're talking like oh, oh, oh. you might go for three or four miles. It just, it'll just run up and down. Sometimes you'll run into what we call squeezes. Okay. It'll drop down to like 19 inches and may go for 100 foot, may go 500 foot that low. And then you ever, it'll pick back up to... Do you ever freak out and get claustrophobic in that? No. So what is this, a mine shaft down here? Deep mines what we call shaft mines when you go down. Okay. Straight, you know, straight down into the ground. This here's kind of what we work in, what I work in is the deep mines. Aiden is Wes's we son. We got sidetracked, Wes. Oh, cool. There it is. Oh, it gets cool immediately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
that's like a 20 degree difference right yeah. here. And that's that's the thing about the coal mines too. You're, it's uh, maybe 10 degrees difference year round. Okay, what's about, the what's the temperature was when you go down into the mines? About, uh, about, about 60, 65. Oh, okay. But you can see where they cut this out with a pick. When a miner cuts it out, it leaves the wall more clean. But, you know, the wall. Straight up and down. Right, and this down. was cut with a pick? Yeah, this was cut out with a pick and a shovel, and they, uh, they use ponies. That is some crazy work. You're just under here in the dark. I mean, it's lit up, but. I mean, it's lit up with your headlight, but when we worked on them wheel cocks, Jeff told me you couldn't see. Like from me to you, I see your light, but I yeah. can't see you because of the dust. When we'd come out from underground on working on the Wilcox, everything was just as black as your shirt. The only thing you could see would be the white of your eyes. Oh, it just gets wet back there, huh? So what looking like them, it? looking like them dang Twin Peaks miners, you know. At the end of that show, I never, I never uh, fully understood it, but you know what I'm saying, they. They made, they made him look great. About them. Oh. oh. Yeah. What were you saying? <laughs> the coal streak. The main thing. This is just where, over the years, it's fell This year's out. just dribbled off and shelled off and stuff like that. So that's the coal seam. That's the coal seam there. Actually, yeah. the seam up with about 20 some inches high. You're trying to look for the seam, which could be, like you're saying, 19 inches. Yeah. And you just tap in and you, keep going yeah, you back. You just on go it. in between, okay. Between the rock with it. Is that a rush when you find it? Ah, that I never did have to hunt for it. That was out of my category right okay. there. I just I just mined it. They coal drill up top, and they coal drill down till they find the seam, and then they'll come in and pace it up and make a high wall. This is the straight A student right there? Which back in the day and time, if they dug his mines out, they just... Bitch, your ass, he wants to play fucking Fortnite right now and not be on the goddamn camera with daddy. Well, see, right there, it's the coal. They, they just followed that coal. Wind. Poor kid, yeah, he's yeah, like, daddy, talking about coal again. Want to be home right now dunking on IT professionals, living far away from me, trying to get a number one victory royale, pop, pop. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Dug it out. Daddy, I don't care about this kind of mining. I said I like Minecraft. Man, that's how Papa got killed. Uh, he was uh, he was loading in a break, and my uncle brought the pony and the load out, and Papa uh, stayed back to uh, load another car so they would have one ready for the next morning. And uh, he got killed while Uncle Larry was on his way out. He left eight kids. collapsed. It did, it fell in and killed him, huh? It huh. killed Papa. I've got the thing where it says coal miner dies and leaves eight children or whatever. And the only thing Granny got out of it, they made old tombstone out of That's how they make it out of cement. Mm -hmm. She never got nothing, did she? No kind of fencing, nothing. Kentucky latency's fucked up for sure. Oh yeah, he's on insane ping. This. Like you've never seen <laughs> nice. ping like this. Woo! You see the camper, the trailers back up through there on the right? Yep. There's a road up to there. There was coal mines that went back in under this mountain right from right there. So your place is literally in the middle of all of these mines. Yeah. Does it make you happy to see all this, all the mines that have taken place? Oh well, yeah. There's been a lot of good people probably lost their lives. Especially back in the day. I mean, it's not near as dangerous as what it used to be. What's that say? Rare breed. That's the truth of that right there. It takes a rare breed for coal mine. What would you want to tell those uh, that never mind, don't understand it? What would you tell them? Stay away from it. You don't have to do it. Lots of customer on copper infrastructure max. Some people can get is 1.5 megabits and four megabits, uh, 
megabits per second packages for internet. I work in ISP in Kentucky. Jesus Christ. Really? Yeah. Cows. Uh, but also at the same time, some of these fucking places will like weirdly have fiber. I don't know if this is one of those places. Probably not. But like America is so weird, dude, where you will have like one fucking town that's like YOLO. Fuck the ISPs. We decided to make government fucking funded uh, infrastructure where they'll just have fiber. It's not even a joke. I forget what it was. There's like random parts of the United States of America. I'm sure M HUD would know immediately, but. The background. Yeah, there's like places where municipalities. Uh, there's places where like. Oh, Chattanooga, Tennessee is a great example. Exactly. Chattanooga. I forgot uh, the name of uh, Chattanooga. But yes, in Chattanooga, they decided these ISBs are fucking us over. I think that's illegal. No, it's not. Yeah. There are places where they will just like say, fuck it. YOLO, we're building it ourselves. Obviously, Chattanooga is like still a city. This is not like... Uh, some places it is illegal. ISP is one. Wait, really? Republic of Chattanooga. I live in Bumfuck, Iowa and have fiber optic. Yeah. You have a better chance getting fiber optic internet in random bumfuck parts of the country than you do in Los Angeles if you're living in the wrong zip code. And while you're young, you don't realize it, but as you get older, the wear and tear it does takes the toll on your body and stuff like that. Yeah. That's that's where it comes into play. At. So what would you tell someone where this is the economy out here? This is what you got. You you would tell the young people just to leave? Go to school, get an education. But then they'd have to leave for a job. Uh no, not necessarily because of my girl, you know, I've, she's been raised right here. For the record, oh, dude, yeah, the government is helping uh, big telecom squeeze out city-run broadband. President Joe Biden's internet access plan will hand $41 billion to internet service providers. In many places, that money will get funneled into private hands. Let me explain something to you, okay? There is no bigger con in the continental United States than the one that these fucking duopolies, these oligopolies in the form of ISPs have run. In the 90s, the American government gave ISPs billions of dollars in tax credits. And they were supposed to build, uh, they were, th this, this tax credit, on top of the subsidies they receive, on top of the infrastructure that the government had built for them prior, okay, these massive ISPs got billions of dollars in tax credits on top of everything else, Specifically for one purpose, to modernize the infrastructure. And they did not do it at all. They took the fucking tax credits and they never modernized the infrastructure. Billions of dollars were given back to these fucking vampires. And then they kept getting more. And nothing has, nothing has, uh, uh, has, has, happened in in terms of punishment they need to go to prison like what happened to the money what do you mean they yoinked it they probably fucking did stock buybacks i suspect we use it to pay off the cities that never allow new isps to lay new lines so it all works out yeah get fucking omi and a hellcat got five years and the very same multinationals that actually wanted to, that actually have now merged with the fucking ISPs in many respects were punishing my man Omi in a Hellcat for aspiring to be in a Hellcat. Okay? Trying to get a private company to build infrastructure is like trying to explain socialism to Twitch streamers. When Omi gets out of prison, we're buying him a Hellcat. She went to school, got an education, and now she's a medical assistant teacher at Southeast Community College. Great. Trying to help the younger ones coming up, teaching them, so maybe they can get keep a job around here 
there's medical programs and stuff like that where they can stay at home and not <sighs> have to leave. Okay. I gotta pee. So in a way, you're you're very proud of your your work in coal mining, but you're also rational, in saying don't do it. Right. My dad. My dad always told me, son, I'll beat you before <laughs> I let you go in the coal mines. He beat but, you a lot then. He beat you then. No. Or he didn't stay to his word. Mm. He didn't say to his word. He, he seen that I wasn't going to leave these hills, and he knew if I was going to have anything, I was going to have to be a coal miner around here. And part of you loves it, though, right? Being in these oh, hills, yeah. Yeah. getting in there, doing yeah, the hard I work. I couldn't, I couldn't stand being out in the city or sitting behind a desk. I'm just, I'm too, what you say, too active a person to try to yeah. sit still. How are, your lung, how are your lungs right now? Because you look really healthy. I wasn't um, expecting this, to be honest. My lungs is the uh, last uh, thing I done. They said I was in pretty good shape. I might, may have just the beginning of what they call first stage black lung, because you got three stages. You got first stage, second stage, okay. third stage. Yeah. And then you got complications like Wes now. I think his is a little worse than mine. But black lung affects everybody different because you got what they call a dry lung and a wet lung. If you got a wet lung, you're breathing that dust and stuff and it's sticking them to them, it's just gonna smother you down. A dry lung, you know, you can pretty much shed it. Uh, so you probably, probably have like, a dry lung. That's just like a mud, mud hole. I okay. Mean, you know, yeah. a dried up mud hole and a wet mud hole. Yeah. I gotta get your opinion on something. Can you turn around, Wes? I'm just looking at your phone case. Oh, it's your wallet. Okay. So quick question, Wes. Yeah. And shut me up when you want, all right? Because yeah. I saw it on, I saw the, the Confederate flag on your, your motorcycle jacket, on yeah. the wallet. So a lot of people, I've been enough in the South where I, I've asked this question a lot, but a lot of people, a lot of Yankees will say, you know, the Confederate flag it only means racism. Yeah. Or what, what are your thoughts on it? It's my heritage. I mean, my family, all the way back to the Civil War, my family fought so we could be free for this country. They all hollered it was about slavery and all this. It wasn't. It was about work. It was about slavery. It was about, it was about many different things. You guys but, didn't have slaves, though, up here, right? I don't think. Part of Kentucky, I mean. Not but, in this, not in the hills. No, not in the hills, no. But, I mean, it's not. It's heritage, man. You know, we don't look at it that way. My, my granddaughter, she's beautiful. She's mixed. You know what I'm saying? My niece and nephews, they're mixed. I don't have no problem. I got some of the best friends that I'll ever have in my life is black. I got a, a guy I met through the internet, black guy. We speak every single day. Every morning he tells me, you know, good morning. How you doing, Wes? Where are you riding today? You know what I'm saying? That's cool. We got bikes in common. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, I mean. People can think what? what they want. I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? I know what it stands for. I know what it means to me. I mean, if I wanted to come out and say, yeah, I'm racist, I would say it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not. I'm not racist at all. Wait, where? How did this conversation start? On a wet mud up. Yeah. I have to go back. I got to get your opinion on something. Can you turn around, Wes? Yeah. I'm just looking at your phone case. Oh, it's your wallet. Okay. So quick question, Wes. Oh, shut brother. me up when you want, all right? Because yeah. I saw it on, I saw the, the Confederate flag on your your motorcycle jacket, on yeah. the wallet. So a lot of people, I've been enough in the South where I, I've asked this question a lot, but a lot of people, a lot of Yankees will say, you know, the Confederate flag it only means racism. Yeah. Or what do, it does. What are your thoughts on it? It's my heritage. I mean, my family. All the way back to the Civil War, my family fought so we could be free for this country. <laughs> they all hollered it was about slavery and all this. It wasn't. It was about work. It was about slavery. It was about, it was about many different things. You guys but, didn't have slaves, though, up here, right? I don't think. Part of Kentucky, I mean. Not but, in this, not in the hills. No, not in the hills, no. But, I mean, it's not. It's hard. Yeah, bro, that makes it worse. Like, literally, they got fucking duped into going to fight for some fucking slave owners, okay?
when they themselves didn't even have the fucking slaves. You fought so the other motherfuckers could have slaves, dude. That literally makes no sense, okay? That makes less fucking sense. Also, speaking of fighting, if we're talking about Kentucky, holy shit, dude. Kentucky, or uh, like th- a lot of these parts can go either way. A lot of these fucking parts uh, of the country, the Appalachia is just like cut in half. Like, which part were you fighting for? You know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense, but motherfuckers are like, yeah, we did this to to preserve his heritage. I'm like, what heritage? What are you talking about? One of your granddaddies might have been fighting on the other side. What the fuck do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? It goes even crazier when motherfuckers in Ohio are rocking with the Confederacy. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? It's heritage, not hate. It's like, what heritage, dumbass? You misunderstood the heritage. Your your granddaddy was killing the motherfuckers whose flag you're you're rocking with. Like it was deep Confederate. Best Virginia joined the Union through uh, though and split from Virginia. I'm just saying that in many respects, these guys don't even understand who the fuck they're talking about when they when they're talking about their grandfathers. Man, you know, we don't look at it that way. My, my granddaughter, she's beautiful. She's mixed. You know what I'm saying? My niece and nephews, they're mixed. I don't have no problem. I got some of the best friends that I'll ever have in my life is black. I got a, a guy I met through the internet, black guy. We speak every single day. Every morning he tells me, you know, good morning. How you doing, Wes? Where are you riding today? You know what I'm saying? That's cool. We got bikes in common. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, I mean. People can think what they want. I don't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? I know what it stands for. I know what it means to me. I mean, if I wanted to come out and say, yeah, I'm racist, I would say it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not. I'm not racist at all. I think everybody's equal. I mean, you got, uh, I don't want to come out and say what I would normally say, but I mean, there's blacks in every crew, and there's whites, and, and there's good people, and there's bad people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's interesting because, unfortunately, a lot of people just... They just give it an easy label, and they see the racism flag, and they get, that's all they see. At all. But, it's I mean, not, you see rebel flags everywhere, but no, racism, I mean, they holler all this Ku Klux Klan and shit. Man, I've been here for all my life, and I ain't never seen a Ku Klux Klan, you know what I mean? It's not like we hate on anybody. I mean, you know, we, we just try to get along, man. We just want everybody to get along, man. I want things to better, you know. I don't care if it's a black president in there, and he's making things better. That's a wonder. You know, if they, if he's a uh, Afghani president in there and he's making things <laughs> better, that's great, man. That's all we're looking for. We want things to prosper. We don't want, you know what I mean? Run the country, give people jobs, give people opportunity, make people want to work again. Quick. Bro said, "I live in Kentucky. I've never seen the Klan." Bro, you've never seen more than the eight people who are your immediate family members. No shit. The fuck do you mean? You've never seen many things, okay? I'm surprised you knew what Afghanistan is. Like, yeah, the Klan very much exists in Kentucky. Holy f- For the record, maybe not where he is. Because why the fuck would the Klan operate where he is? There isn't even enough black people to fucking, uh, you know, attack or get angry about the existence of, dude. You you got, there's no people there. Giving people shit, you know. I'm glad my oldest son did decide to leave because he bettered himself. He went for a good job. How many kids do you have? I have four. Four? Two girls, two boys. All right. This is your youngest? That's my youngest. Uh, I've had him ever since he was born. <laughs> I'm a single dad with him. Uh, yeah. We keep a girlfriend around on occasion, but uh, yeah, on occasion. Biggest part is uh, <laughs> me and him just uh, <laughs> me and him just uh, do the bachelor thing and, and love life and enjoy. And or at least try. We we do good, son. You got it made there, buddy. Don't start that. <laughs> Show him your shirt. What do you got? Huh? Wait, what is my shirt? Support your local peacemakers. What's that? A local group here? 
it's one of the <clears throat> motorcycle clubs I sent you about that we. Uh oh. Also, I just want to show you guys something here. This is un unbearable. Okay, this is unacceptable. I don't know what to do about this situation, okay? At a certain point, it's like, enough is enough. I literally can't even fucking stand. Like, out of control. Just absolutely fucking out of control. She's awake. She's just refusing to move. Huh. Ridiculous. We got a lot of really good friends, and they're really good people. Good can we, people. Can we ride back down? Who's, yeah. who's this on your... That is my son when he was 16 years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, what else you it. got? Uh, a little bit of everything. The moto, the car? Yeah, that was my first car, my first bike. Tell them about the heart. Uh, when my mom died, I had that... Black heart put on there. Uh, I said that when mom died, it turned my heart black. You know what I mean? Cardinals, when my grandmother died, mm. writing under them is, uh, that's their handwriting. Uh, the guy actually took from letters that they wrote me and took their handwriting and put it under each of them. And, uh, and my mom was my world, you know? She was my rock, and Granny was everything to all of us. I mean, she's what held everything together. It's like they know stuff, like my grandma Brown, and uh, she called mom and dad one night, wanted to know where I was at, 1.30 in the morning, you know what I mean? I'm 16 year old, wild. You gotta anyway, be there. I had, uh, I had got out and wrecked a motorcycle. A few minutes later, they got a phone call that they had me in the hospital, you know what I mean? I lost a lot of blood and so forth, and uh, just like she knew it. And my grandma, Moody, she could, uh, she could read out of the Bible. Ephesians 16 and 5, I think it is. And if you're bleeding, it would stop bleeding. Now people was going to look at this and say, look, this dumb. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, it's 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 true. I mean, it's true. It, right up here the other day, I had a guy to shoot himself. And, uh, you met home, I When the state it. police come up, he was like, uh, why did you bring a Bible up here? What the hell is that Bible for? And I said, you ever hear of Ephesians and told him the verse? I said, you know. I said, dude's a free bleeder, he's dying, you know? And they said, so you brought a Bible instead of a tourniquet? I said, what are you going to do, preach his funeral? You know, just kind of redneck top anyway. But, but uh, I don't know, that's just the first thing I thought. I keep a Bible in my truck, so I grabbed a Bible. I'm not no big Christian or Bible thumper or nothing like that. I just, you know, I was raised. Uh, most people in our class is raised to believe in church and so forth. Is, you know? is the church attendance down a lot these days? Actually, the church or, is, is... Or is it pretty busy here? I mean, actually, here around Holland County, when actually, the church is doing pretty good, ain't you? Yeah. When I went to yesterday, it had... A lot of younger people going to church. It used to have, like, five, and the other day it had 22 kids. Yeah. At church? Yeah. Oh, yeah, at church. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's not exactly the Bible Belt. I mean, it's not, you know, they don't run it down your neck or nothing like that, but they will come out. They'll talk to you, and you know they'll they'll ask you. They won't push it on you. But, you know, right? It's tell just good about, people. Uh, tell them about how Bag used to read the Bible to her plants to make them grow. Yeah. <laughs> Bag was something else, but boy. Yeah. Surprisingly, it worked. So, family family ties, strong family connections, are everything out here, huh? Everything. Everything. You guys are pretty. I would die for anybody in my family today, tomorrow. So either you're born into a good family here where they're tight or you're born into like some drug messed out. Come on, man. Come on. Why you got to be like that, dude? Jesus Christ. Family and that's got to be brutal. Buddy, even. I just be honest with you. Uh, I got hurt in the mines back in 94. Was put on Oxycontins when they first come out. I got on the Oxycontins and my family stood beside me through every bit of it and seen that I got clean. And got yeah, there you go, dude. Exactly. Exactly. You're First of all, you're talking about coal miner in Kentucky. The likelihood that that dude was also, uh, you know, treated for his fucking grave injury with uh, a metric ton of pharmaceuticals that turn people into those meth and uh, heroin addicts. 
is high. I just, I don't know. I don't know why you got to be like that. You know what I mean? You don't got to be like that. Got straight and say right with me. They never push me away. They. How long were you on Oxy for? Uh, for a while. Doctors kept me on about six years. Did they, that was the time when they were pushing the pill mills, right? Exactly. They were getting the doctors all in on it up here. Yes, sir. And this was like ground zero for that, right here. Right here in West Virginia. Virginia. West Virginia, and so a lot of lot of people got addicted, right? A lot. Because you had injuries, doctor said, "Here's this, this will help." Oh God, they started me on uh, 40 milligram, and within a month, I was up to 380 milligram pills a day, three Xanaxes a day. I mean, and then like Sheesh. five years later, I walked into my doctor's office, and he said, "Oh, they said we can't write you these anymore." So you know. Did the doctors? Uh, did the doctors go to jail or anything for that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, my doctor they got, got busted. Seventeen years. In. Yeah. Uh, did the Sacklers uh, go to jail for that? Uh, no, they didn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, they did not. Uh, so it's wild that the doctors got uh, jail time for it. Which, by the way, I mean, it makes sense because a lot of those pill mills were directly fucking uh, making the problem worse. Uh, but yeah, it, it, with respect to that, the big business, the billionaire family doesn't go to jail. Uh, they get their name on the side of like, uh, I don't know, the art hall of uh, an institution or the opera house in your local fucking, uh, in your, you know, a, a New York opera house or whatever. They get to fund the arts and whatnot. Whereas the rural doctor cashing in, well, he bet you bet your fucking ass he went to jail. Prison. No way. Yeah, I got 20. You got 20, what do you mean? I got 20 years, too. In prison? Yeah. You've been what? in prison for 20 years? I didn't do 20 years. I've done nine and a half. Wow. Yeah. For doing... Can I, I ask? For popping... The okay, there's no fucking shot that he just only got... Kaya, what are you doing? Gross. Gross. Get up. 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 No way he was only doing, he's doing 20 years for just, he was probably helping the doctor, I would assume. There's no the way. Pills. Well, <clears throat> well, when they cut me off, I mean, you're so sick, you don't know. And so I decided, you know, hell, I've got all these pills put up. So if you make a buck, you know what I mean? So you're selling oh. them. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, he was selling them. He said the letters they wrote me before, where you think he was? I don't fucking know. I didn't think immediately prison. The fuck? You see top of the hour, do you immediately think ad break? Some of you do, and most of you forget. You know what I mean? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Here's the three-minute ad break now. I honestly, this sounds crazy, and I know people ain't going to believe it out there, but I honestly, honest to God, I mean, I didn't even sell it to the guy. I gave it to him because uh, he said his wife wouldn't take his kid to the hospital or something unless she got a pill, and I gave him a pill. And next thing I know, they've got me in court, got me in jail, got me in court and nine and a half years later. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, that's so that just, that just destroyed the region a bit, huh? All that oxygen? It hurt it. I mean, it hurt it really bad. And then it had gang. Yo, what's up? What happened, bro? Talk to him about drug dealers now and druggies. Go ahead. Come on. He was literally selling drugs. Where is the genuine disdain you have? For people who do drugs, and even worse, God forbid, sell drugs, kind of hard. Kind of hard, isn't it? You just said he didn't sell them, Haas? Yeah, okay, bro. He literally did say he sold them. He said he wanted to make some side cash because he was desperate. Nefarious, thank you for the 10 gifted. Gained its way back and was doing great. Everybody was doing good. Uh... That's not what he said. He said he just sold that. The one he got busted on wasn't selling it. For the record, I don't even think that, like, I, I mean, I get it. I get why people sell drugs. That's my entire point. They got him for giving one away, though. Sorry, misunderstood. Dude, you're not good. You're not getting 20 years for giving a drug away, okay? He was definitely, he's in a biker gang. He probably was selling it. But a lot of people forget, okay? A lot of people forget that. I talk about this all the fucking time. Drug dealers aren't selling fucking drugs because they're just magically bad people who want to do bad in the fucking world. They're doing it because 
in a lot of instances like this dude, they're in a shitty predicament where they need to fuel their addiction, okay? Or they need to they need to pay for their addiction. Or they're doing it to get out of fucking like criminal abysmal levels of poverty. I think it's great to see a dude like this uh, especially on this journey, uh, you know, get introduced to him, develop a liking to him, and then slowly but surely start to unwind some of the other aspects of his existence because this is probably the only way that chatters will ever see people like this as real human beings reacting to stimuli, reacting to their circumstances, reacting to their environments, right? It's never... It doesn't work the way you think it works. What, Valky Raid? Thank you for the raid, Valky Ray. 20 years, what the fuck? That's like the max sentence in my country, Lamau, that's fucked. Yeah, birthday raid. The Sackler stole what would have been the best years of my life for me, so now I'm in my upper 30s, I'm experiencing the best years of my life. Yeah, that's the point. That's like, that's actually the issue here. That's why I have so much uh, respect for uh, Big Mike. That he only served nine and a half years. Yeah, dude. 20 years is fucking ridiculous. Whenever they give you like this insane sentencing, oftentimes you get out on half that on good behavior for the record. But regardless, dude, it's still fucking insane. He went to jail for nine and a half years. The fuck do you mean only? Big Mike discourse again? Yes, I will always have a tremendous, tremendous appreciation and respect for people who have struggled with addiction. Okay? and have have defeated it and it's a lifelong struggle you never fully defeat it you know what i mean dog i'm addicted to this dog addicted to giving her belly rubs i mean everybody was sober it seemed like and then the shit hits around here the fentanyl and the, which i mean you don't find many people it's the younger people man and that's what's so sad because you see all these young people dying man and it's sad it's a, he's fucking wicked brother look at them glasses he's got on and it really is it's sad and you know, a lot of young people dying out here a lot a lot the schoolhouse you actually can't see it for the trees but that's part of the parking lot right there and just like right across the street they've been four four die in one house there Jeff, you never had a problem with the, the pills out here or anything? No, I haven't. <clears throat> so what you biggest do? Thing I, biggest thing I've probably done is took a few shots of moonshine and drank beer. <laughs> I was the first person in this county that was ever prescribed Oxycontin. The, the first, first person in the county to be prescribed Oxycontin? Yeah, Dr. Ali Swap. He's and still in prison? No, he's out. I think he may have died. So in your guys' days, it was, you had... Bro, 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 bro. Come on, come on. You can't just only be talking about the fucking podunk doctor. Please, please use the brain muscles a little bit further. Take it one step further. Be like, you guys know who the Sacklers are. Do you know Purdue Pharmaceutical? I'm sure they know, too. It's not even like... And even if they don't, it's like, come on, think about it. Had an injury in the mine. You needed uh, pain relief. Like oxy, right? They load you up on pain pills and send you back to work the next day. Okay, but now you're saying the young people now, they're not in the mines, so they're just getting they the drugs. They're nothing. They're getting dope, and they're, they're making money running and selling it for somebody else. You know what I mean? And it's not. You could probably the cartels and stuff sending it in here. They say Louisville's a hub for it. You know what I mean? Louisville's, what, two and a half hours away? Louisville's a hub. Should be more rehabs. I mean, I think they should be more, you know, uh, sober living homes, stuff like that. Prison, don't. <laughs> this guy's so. Yeah, look at this, dude. My man, my man's rocking with the Confederacy while simultaneously talking about rehabilitation over incarceration, brother. You know what I'm saying? The fuck is this? Treat addiction like it's an illness. Don't incarcerate it. Wonder why he has such a what would be considered an incredibly endlessly liberal approach. Which, by the way, again, Hassan, can you explain thinking past the doctor, genuinely confused, want to learn? Um, so there's been a lot of writing on this uh, that you can fi find. There's also, uh, I think there was a Hulu show as well that was like a direct recreation of real events that transpired. But the Sackler family owns a company called Purdue Pharmaceutical. Purdue Pharmaceutical created Oxycontin and lied to American doctors 
and greatly marketed Oxycontin as a non-addictive drug, as a non-addictive pain relief uh, uh, drug. Now, of course, it was profoundly addictive, as we all know, you know, many years later. Um, they lied and said slow release was going to make it safe. They lied on every aspect of the drug in and of itself. They also then went and created um, institutions within universities. They built tink, think tanks, as they often do. They built institutions within universities that were like uh, that specifically focused on pain management and pain relief. Those little, those little like uh, uh, things that you see when you go to the doctors. Like sometimes they'll show you like a little smiley face, all the way to like an angry face, one to ten. That is literally from the Sackler family's uh, think tanks on pain relief. They paid, yeah, the pain charts that you see, the pain scales that you see was created by the pain management, pain relief institutions that the Sackler family directly played a role in creating. Um, and then they not only lied about the addictive nature of the drug itself, but they also paid doctors to pump it. There were pill mills. It was like a... It was an industry that was great because guess what? I mean, heroin is super addictive, dude. Once you get hooked on it, you really want it. They also made drugs that are uh, supposed to uh, save you if you're overdosing. Yeah. Or, or I think they do Narcan, not Suboxone. Or do they also, like they do the methadone substitute, which is, uh, I think they do the methadone substitute. I always get it confused. Or they either... Also own a patent for Narcan, which is what you take, uh, which is what you're supposed to be given when you are overdosing on heroin, or uh, the the other opiate substitute that it, you're supposed to take to get off of it. Um, but yeah, they did so much. They they basically created this industry of heroin, and uh, they got millions of Americans addicted to it. They killed so many people. They still kill people to this day. Um, and they did it above board, you know, they did it in a legal way, uh, how, because they're rich and that's how it works. So the kickback schemes and false marketing is ultimately what got them where they are today, which is of course a couple billion dollars less than where they were, but still not behind bars. Meanwhile, all the bumfuck doctors that, <laughs> that worked in these goddamn towns were also getting the kickbacks and they certainly went to prison. None of the Sacklers actually went to prison, but let me tell you something. Now, you might say, Hassan, these guys are wealthy billionaires. They weren't involved directly in marketing this product. No, no, no. The Sacklers were uniquely evil. I need you to understand. In a lot of circumstances, the billionaire failed children don't actually have any say in the operation. They are still morally culpable and should be punished, but this is is one of the very unique circumstances where, yes, some of the family members were absolutely hands-on involved in the marketing initiatives and hands-on involved with all of the schemes. So, you know, just remember that when you think about how many people have died and how this conversation has turned around from, like, actually uh, the, the real villains to, like, I don't know... Uh, Mexicans are bringing in fentanyl over the border. Not true. Okay? Not what's happening. That is not the real reason. There's a market for it now, which is why it's coming in. But the real problem was always the opiate addiction be started, uh, uh, the opiate addiction being started with the Sackler family and Purdue Pharmaceuticals. Whew. Pharmaceuticals are drug dealers with say authorization. If you do, you are a narco or a drug. If you do it, you're a narco or drug dealer. I mean, yeah, but not all drug dealers are fucking bad. Okay. Like <laughs> motherfuckers talking about it. Like, dude, it's like, you know, the guys who make the insulin. Well, the guys who make the insulin, like Eli, Eli Lilly, right? Like the, the, the insulin creators are evil because they're not selling it for fucking free. Uh, they're they're selling it for money, so that's why they're fucking evil. Um, it should be free. Dane. I'm happy. I mean, honestly, got it. Um, I mean, prison can like your worst person. You know what I'm saying? It just done me just the opposite. It made me think everything that I missed. You know what I'm saying? My son was nine year old when I went to prison, and uh, when he come got me, he was 18. He, you 
you know, he'd go to prison to pick me up. So that's what you think we need in the country overall, just more more rehab, more yeah. more family structure, which is hard to... I don't know. I'm from Kentucky, and me and my friends all started Oxy when we were like 15. They were everywhere. Christ. I don't know how you fix that, but... And you need... You need... You need it out of here. You need to shut the borders down. You yeah, look at him. Look, he's so fucking tapped in. Shut the borders down. Yeah, brother. It's the Mexicans that prescribed you the, the Oxycontin. You know what I mean? That you also sold. You literally sold the drugs. Oh, my God. Okay. This is where I lose it. Because it's like, yeah, I went to prison. But, like, it's fucking bullshit that I went to prison. Also, you shouldn't go to prison uh, for for doing this, which I don't even disagree with. And then he goes, oh, but the Mexicans over the border, those motherfuckers, they can't. <laughs> what, what, what's the argument? Only white Americans are allowed to fucking sell me Oxycontin and pills? What the fuck? Oh. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not racist towards nobody, but this is America, man. You know, think about the Americans first before you start bringing all these other people in here. Worry about the problems you got here right now and fix them, and then worry about everybody else. I mean, take care of America, man. You know what I mean? This might not be nothing to nobody. I mean, for me, it might not be nothing. I mean, look at it. It's beautiful. You got family. I mean, I could not... Yeah, I mean, his, it, it's funny because, like, he's not doing the classic them immigrants took our jobs shit because, like, there ain't no jobs to take out here. So... <laughs> and there ain't no Mexicans out there either. So he's like, notice how every American problem always can be reduced to like immigrants are responsible for it. The Mexicans are responsible for it, which is like hilarious. But, but because he doesn't have any jobs that Mexicans took from him specifically, he's like, you know, fucking they're dealing the drugs. <laughs> Bro, he was a drug dealer. The immigrants did take his job. Well, I mean, the immigrants were his suppliers at that point, if he's talking about the Mexicans. Knock on any door out there, and I guarantee you, they feed you. You, you're not even from around here. And right. I guarantee you, you go to any door around here and say, right. man, I'm thirsty, I need a bite to eat, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. C could you give me a drink of water? Could you could you, could you spare a bologna sandwich, you know what I'm saying? And I guarantee you, yeah. 99.9% .9 of them would take you in, set you down, feed you a meal, give you something to drink, you know what I'm saying? No, uh, this trip I started in West Virginia, I've felt nothing but that from the locals. And one guy bought my meal, just one stranger bought my meal at a restaurant. That's everyone, a around here, paying forward to call. Everyone's been very cool, and I think that's what doesn't go out to the world about Appalachia, like deep Appalachia like this. We're in the yeah. thick of it. Yeah. And those connections and the way people are to each other, they can be. I mean, you're either loved or hated, I think, right, is how right, it goes, right? Yeah. But you bring that on yourself also. You, know you what get what you give, right? I mean, if you give, you get, if you show somebody a support and show them that you really need it, they'll help you, and they will. I mean, honestly, there's times that my family should have just turned their back on me and said, you know, we're done. But instead, they kept pushing. This is the old grates that were in the house. They would have two-sided chimneys. And this would be like for the family room and in the main bedroom, they would have on the other side. And you'd put your coal in here and at night you would uh, bank it, what they call banking. In other words, they'd get a good fire going, they'd put ashes on top of it and it would hold heat all night. Okay. And that's what you would heat the house with. And like uh, the old buck stove we got in here, they would use them in the houses for cooking and so forth. This actually an old lawnmower. They used to use the ponies to pull the coal out of the mines and got all the old pony shoes. Ponies and, to pull the coal out? Yeah. In here we got mainly mining stuff. Uh, I'm sorry, we've got electricity off out here right now, but they caught these breast augers and you can see. Okay. That's the, that's the bit. And some of them a lot longer than that, but the men would Two men would operate it, and one man would put a plate against his chest. Okay. And they would drill into the coal, and then they would be able to put shots off in it then. So and drill in, then put a stick of dynamite in, right? right? 
this is just all old glass, old bottles and stuff. My great granddad bought this property in 1942, and this is just all the old bottles and stuff that come out of the camp houses. And like we was looking at the old toy car. Uh, where oh I yeah, said, this. Yeah. That's like a four pound yeah. toy car. And that's some of the fossils that was found in the mines. You find a lot of fossils in the mines. What is that, do you know? That's a tree. That's an actually old tree. Just petrified wood? Petrified oh, wow. Wood. Yeah. That's like, um, Just some what do you of... think, eight pounds maybe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's heavy. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's just different things. It was through years that we've collected over the years. You got the old Civil War thing. They would melt their, uh, they would melt their lead in it and pour it into cash for balls, you know, for the lead balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we were going out shooting and hunting, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> This is, uh, you'd heat this up with on coal tire? On top of the stove here. This is what old buck stove All right, like. you just did that, right? Yeah, you just set it on top of it, then when it got hot, you could iron with it. It's got a striker on the bottom, and you would ignite it, and when you would go into the face of the coal, if the light went out, you know, that there was an oxygen deficiency because, you know, fire won't burn without oxygen. So a miner know it's time to get out of there, you know what I mean? And then if the flame burn a certain color, they know they were methane, so they know to back out. Did you ever have a problem with oxygen in the mines? Uh, we cut into one old mines, and it wasn't on the map, and uh, it flooded us out. And uh, we had low oxygen, but we were really deep, and it took a while to get out, but everybody got out all right. And, Everything was good. Super scary? Ah, uh, not so much. I mean, we, that wasn't the first time we'd ever cut into old works. But, you just uh, got to stay calm, huh? But my son was like 17 at the time, and he was mad as hell because I was kind of helping run the mines, you know, kind of helping the guy out. And uh, they had a boss up there that had no knowledge whatsoever, and he got madder than hell because I went back in, you know what I'm saying? and the set pumps and stuff, and uh, oh God, he took a fit, you know what I mean? And, but, so you guys would sacrifice yourselves for these companies in a way, huh? Well, I mean, like I would suck, I guess, sometimes. You know, like I said, I missed five years of, uh, when I started bossing. I missed the first five years I bossed. I didn't come home for Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, whatever. We were in a mine that had so many pumps in it. The pumps had to be made every day. Dude. Dude, he was in jail until his son was 18, so how was his son 17? He has like five sons, dude, I think. He has like five kids. I'm sure, you know, through the government. And I would have to go out on Christmas Day and Thanksgiving Day and pump water and check pumps all day and make them where I was born. Two sons, so, two daughters. But uh, I kind of oh. regret that in a way because I uh, just got to spend my grandma's last two years with her for Christmas and stuff. That was her birthday. Uh, she lived here. Uh, we actually. She uh, lived right here? Yeah, she lived right here. And then we used to have an old, old camp house that sat right here. And they were, uh, believe it or not, at one time, I think there was 19 houses through here. In this valley here? Just straight up this holler. So this is all family? This is all family. Everybody up now through this family. He dropped me off? Yeah. It's the end of the story, Jeff? And the solar. What time are you up tomorrow morning? 4 30. Bright and early. Well, I appreciate it. See you, old bud. You're a great guy. Sure. I don't need to tell you to have fun because I think you are. <laughs> Some medals that he got for academics and ball and Oh, uh, these are your medals here, Aiden? Yeah. Governor Three. Scholar and that one's for future problem solving. We did it in district but we lost. And we went to region. Dang, they got a participation trophy. Don't hear him complaining about that. Aiden got a participation trophy. He seems damn proud of it. We had a second chance and we won region. Sorry. This was my dad's. Like I said, dad got covered up. You can see where it knocked his. Someone shooting up there? Oh, yeah, they shoot. They just go, they got like a little range of probably oh, okay. shoot at. Uh, it actually broke his light off his hat and everything, broke his bill off his hat. He run a miner and he was in the deck of it and it had him shoved down in the deck. 
and he'll tell you about sitting there eating dinner while he was covered up. It took him about six hours to get the rock off of him. And uh, when we come in from school, we seen the ambulance sitting there, so of course we freaked out. But he would not go on to the hospital till the kids seen that he was okay. You know, that was Granddad's hat, and it passed down to me. I wore it probably till the inspector made me quit wearing it. Where it's a cut down hat. And then oh, we, the inspectors wouldn't let this fly because it's cut down. Well, they didn't say nothing for years and years, and I got, <laughs> I started bossing. I'd get so mad, I throwed it so many times, I broke it where it's cut. I broke it where it's cut down, and I just taped it up, started wearing it. And they wouldn't <laughs> let that fly, so I ended up that's the one I come out in. Uh, I wore that until 2017. I, I come out in 17. Got an I voted sticker. Ask him about who he voted for. Thank you, brother. You're Appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for bringing me in today. I got some stuff I want to give you before you leave. Straight out of Smith, Kentucky. Oh! 40 proof. Got that moonshine, brother. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I don't say a whole lot more on camera about that, but. Uh, <laughs> got brother, that will get you blind, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. For you too. Thank you. This was made off, so a good friend of mine made that, and uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate you to have it. Ah. Uh, yeah. I want you to have that, both of them, man. That's so cool, Wes. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. One more. Uh, Thank you, bro. Good to meet you, man. Great to meet you. Thanks for you being brave and willing to take me in, because I know most people that come oh, with the camera, your you guys are sick of them, nah, that you said, and uh, you're sick of media stupid. coming in and making you guys look terrible, don't right? Don't look stupid, man. You know what I mean? We're good people. Yeah. Yeah. You know? It's very evident for anyone that wants to, that's just truly curious. Simpler, just a little simpler, simpler life than most of used to, but man, I wouldn't have it no other way. All right, guys, another view into a world most of us have no understanding of. Uh, a few big takeaways for me. Uh, first this was a great two-parter. I mean, he did a great job, Peter uh, Santanello. Obviously, it's complicated. He's really good. You know, Jeff is in coal. It pays for the life style and everything they have out here, but would never want their kids to be in coal. And while it's gone for four or five, maybe six generations on out here, with this generation, it seems like they want it to stop in that sense. But then they're torn because that's what they know. They're tied to their land, deeply rooted with family members here. Couldn't imagine being anywhere else. So this is what pays for all of that to happen. And secondly, I know coal is a controversial. I would say this is one of the main differences between like EU living and this, right? You go to West Virginia, you go to Kentucky, you go to parts of Appalachia. These dudes are living on an entirely different planet. You go to EU, the most rural ass fucking place is the EU. There's still going to be, there are still going to be, uh, they're still going to be accessible. If you ever get on a fucking train in Germany, in France, in England, there's still absolutely fucking areas that are accessible. That is not true at all. Wait, what? How is that not true at all? I'm not talking about Eastern Europe. I'm talking about Western Europe, which is significantly more comparable to motherfucking United States of America. England is not EU. It's still Europe. And... While their situation is not great either, okay, while their situation might not be great either, it is infinitely better in comparison to someone living in Appalachia. Don't listen to the chat. I've lived in rural Europe and it's very different from rural America. Bro, rural Europe is very different than rural America. Rural America is closer to rural China, okay, than fucking uh, rural Europe. Like those places that we watched yesterday when it's like do 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 the the fucking white guy that goes and lives in a fucking faraway town with like uncle and he's eating pig heads and shit. 
That experience is unironically closer to the fucking Appalachian experience. Anyway. Energy form. I love clean air and water, just like most people. Uh, I've learned that it's in the steel making process. I don't know it through and through, but from the human side of things, um, look, if that's your way of life, uh, whatever industry you might be in, say- Expand in rural Silicon Turkey and rural US. I mean, rural Turkey's worse. Infrastructure is less, like, at least these guys got like, even in the most podunk part of town, there's still like some semblance of a fucking road. In rural Turkey, there's always going to be places that is like inaccessible. It's just dirt. You know what I mean? The reality is that American infrastructure still heavily rests on the laurels of the New Deal. Like, they built, they built the solid infrastructure uh, that a lot of these other developing nations never were able to do. That's why you can't compare it to fucking Mexico. We can't compare it to Turkey. You can't compare it to all these other places. It's just that the issue is it's crumbling and they're not doing enough to actually fix it. You know what I mean? Con Valley and create tech and imagine, obviously this can't happen, but all of a sudden tech's gonna be gone and your industry will be gone. And then what are you going to do? And whatever you might be in, whatever profession, that's sort of a scary thought, I would think. So these people are living with this daily, as in the letter comes in, the mind's gonna shut down, and maybe they'll be ousted until the next job appears. Uh, but I think it's a stressful worry that your work, your talent, your knowledge. Your Shatters, you think Europe is massively bigger than the US? Oh yeah, I never said that like, uh, Land use is comparable. That's why I think China is a better comparison with a significantly uh, worse starting point than the United States of America. You know what I mean?